This video is about pruning pear trees, both the best case and the worst case scenario. Uh, in this case, we're standing in front of a pear tree that's in my backyard. Uh, it's been here for about 15 years. Uh, it's pretty small. The reason it's pretty small is because I like to prune. And so we've kept this tree to a reasonable, manageable size. Um, as we progress into the video, I'm going to show you some pear trees that haven't been properly pruned so you can kind of get an idea. I often hear from people that uh, you, you're always doing this really well pruned tree. My tree is really overgrown and big. Bill, what do I do with it? So I'm going to show you a good, a well pruned pear tree and one that isn't so pruned. Now, first thing we want to know about pears is pears have fruiting spurs. Right here, we're starting to get the slightest bit of bud development this year. Uh, this is uh, late February in California, and this pear is getting ready to open up. So you can see right there where those buds are at. That's what we're going to get our fruit from. These little weird knobby twigs that are all over a pear tree are called fruiting spurs. They live quite a few years, probably over 10 years even on some varieties. Uh, the fruiting spurs are where we get all our fruit from. So when you're pruning, you don't want to be removing all those little strange buds. I've seen this happen before. If you take these away, you get no pears, okay? So that's the first thing. Next thing to know about pears is they have a tendency to grow very vertical. If you look up here, this is relatively new growth in this tree. Uh, mostly my tree has been forced into unnatural acts. I have turned it sideways and the sideways turning of the tree has caused it to grow in rather strange formations but it's growing close to the ground. So we're always having to work with the verticality in pairs. The fact that the shoots want to grow straight up to outer space. If you get too many of them doing that they all race each other for the sunlight and then you get a tree that looks more like an Italian cypress than a pear tree. Next thing is that pears do get a disease called fire blight. And if they have fire blight, you're going to see the leaves die, the buds die. It comes into the tree ordinarily right after the bloom. The disease can be carried in by pollinating insects is the easiest way you get it. The bees come in, they set in your flowers. If they were in an infected tree next door, they're going to transmit the disease. And then you're going to see your branches and your leaves, your flowers and so on turning blackish in the tree, that's why they call it fire blight, and they die away. Um, now, so when we go into a pear tree, we need to take a look and see, is there All any right, so dead with wood? Any tree, no. Anything that's deformed, this is pretty cute, I like that, huh? Isn't that neat? I guess, uh, I don't know, big heavy pear, bent it over and bent it, broke it. So I'm going to take that right off the tree. Uh, this tree won't require a lot of pruning since it's been turned sideways. The growth on the tree is fairly slow. My problems will be mostly that it's heading outward at me and I have to push it back in so we can get through here. So I'm going to go about removing branches that are sticking out too far uh, into my walking space. And so on this tree that will be our program. Um, this one here, I think we're going to take off this. we got quite a cluster there at the end. And I'm trying to always push this tree back in a little bit because stuff gets so horizontal out here, if it weights down with pears, uh, then the branches are going to start trying to break. Pear wood is not really all that strong, so you don't want to let it spread outward too far. Uh, not looking too bad here, it's just fairly simple. Here's some weird crossing wood in this case. I believe I'm going to just take that one off the top. That looks better. Um, this is really dangling out here in outer space too, so I think we're going to shorten that one up some. And otherwise, now the only other thing I believe I have to address here, because mostly I'm going to reduce the verticality of my tree. And so I'm going to take that piece of wood off there. Um, and I'm going to prune this one here to sideways growth to continue the process I've had here in this tree of trying to develop shoots that run to the side rather than run vertical. When wood in fruit trees is turned sideways, it becomes more fruitful. It actually slows down the growth of the plant. It doesn't grow nearly as hard as it once did. Once it's turned sideways, it also will produce more flower buds. Well, now that we've had a look at a well-pruned pear tree, um, I'm going to go ahead and we'll move on to one that hasn't been pruned at all. So you can see worst case scenario. I don't see hardly any evidence that anybody's done any pruning on this again, except for that same old guy who comes through and saws off all the lower limbs. I got a feeling that the guy that does this doesn't pick fruit. 
<laughs> because if he picked fruit, he'd probably be keeping some limbs closer to the ground. Anyway, since a pear does grow really vertical, as you can see, it looks like an Italian cypress or a Lombardi poplar or something here, uh, we do have to kind of work against that some because if you get too much of it going on, the tree becomes too vertical and the tree is going to fight itself for sunlight in the core. And that's just what this one's doing. It's heading to outer space. And so we're going to save a portion of the main trunk. So unlike a stone fruit, a pear tree or an apple tree is pruned with a fairly tall central trunk maybe five to seven main limbs coming okay, off so of that trunk. By process it, of elimination. I'm looking at this branch right here. It's been let to grow, but it's got this terrible hook back into the core of the tree, okay? So uh, I'm gonna solve one problem right away just by sawing this limb right out of the tree because it's deformed as far as I'm concerned. There we go. That one's out. Now, I have another one here. This has got better form, but it's got another one here that's overlapping it, okay, and growing in between. And so, again, we'll make life a little easier for the tree by removing this one, too. There we go. Things are getting a little bit thinner up there. Now, I've been thinking ahead. Before I cut any of that, I was looking at this limb right here, maybe. Uh, is probably becoming uh, the uppermost limb in this particular tree, uh, that would work out okay uh, as the tip of the tree. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the entire core of the tree right out. First thing I'm going to do is just take that top off, like that, right there. Uh, okay, now, that makes it a little bit thinner. A little more air inside the tree. Pretty soon the little birdies will be able to fly through the tree. Um, which is kind of a good rule of thumb when you're working with trees. And what's the point of having a fruit tree when you can't pick the thing anyway? And at this rate, this thing is literally heading into outer space. And so I have selected this limb right here to be the limb coming at me in this direction. And I'm going to take all the weight off above it before I actually go ahead and saw that part of the trunk. There. Okay. Uh, that's good. Okay. Now I'll take, take it here next. So we're doing this in stages. Now the wood can be fairly heavy. It's full of water. It's been raining around here. And uh, if you get too close to where you want to finish, you can end up peeling the bark off and damaging the tree. Uh, and I don't want to do that. All right. So before I can even get to where I want to cut, I have a little twig right here that I have to remove. There you go. And there's one over here, and there's another one over here and over here. All right, there. That makes my life easier and my work simpler. Next. Do the final cut against this limb is now being the uppermost limb in the tree and will now be the rest of the central leader of the plant. And that's why we call this modified central leader. As you see, I just modified the central leader by cutting away 100 pounds of wood. There we go. Good. Nice. Cut it on an angle so the water drains off. Very good. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is look for wood that's crossing. And so, right here I have a crossing chute. I'm going to cut it back to the fruiting spur. Um, here, this wood is crossing. I'm going to cut that back to the fruiting spur. Here, we have too much stuff on the inside of the tree uh, that's going to compete. So I'm going to take this one out, period. Um, over here, i got more crossing wood. This particular limb, again, is one of those that is in-curved. And... Yeah. Yeah, going to do it. The tree is actually deformed because of the fact that it was allowed to grow for too long uh, with too many pieces of wood up the core of the tree. And so I'm going to go ahead and change that limb so that this piece of wood right here becomes the end of the limb. Because I've got a limb here, and I've got a limb here I've saved. This thing has already grown back into the core, and uh, I don't want that. So I'm going to take the weight off right there. 
we go. Now, take the rest of the wood off right here. And get an angle to it. Try to come in the same plane as the branch that I'm saving. Gently, gently. There we go. Very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, that's nice. All right, I like that. Uh, next, let's look around here and see what else we got. Um, this one here, fill in the core of the tree. Uh, I'm going to take that out also. Um, this one here, too long. Prune it to an outward bud. Excellent. Here, fruiting spurs right in here. Take the tip off of it right there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, all right, now, this is crossing. I'm going to take that off completely. Here is good outward curving branch, but it's got a vertical shoot on the end of it. Excellent. There we go. Here we are back in Bill's garden again. Um, you've seen the worst case. Here's the best case. Um, if you prune your pears well, you're going to get a lot of fruit off a small area. This tree over here is very tiny. It's hardly taller than my head. Um, but yet we get probably nearly a bushel of pears off this little goofy thing every year. I keep it this size. This is a camise. Um, came from this tree. Camise is a great storage pear. It isn't really that good right off the tree in fall, in my opinion. But when you take this and put it in the cold storage for the winter, we're now in late February. These are getting absolutely delicious at this point. Mm -mm -mm. Really good. You'll be glad you pruned your pear tree properly so you can get plenty of these. They'll keep in storage if it's cold enough all the way into May. We're starting to get flowers coming on the tree now, again already, but I'm still eating the pears. Happy gardening.